I was planning on putting out another deliberate practice video, but events conspired to encourage me to change direction and do a little video on mindfulness instead. Last night, we had a thunderstorm roll through. Whenever we do, they're always preceded by a bit of a squall, and last night persuaded a tree branch to come down. On its way down, the branch took off our chimney cap and put a bit of a dent in it. A little cosmetic damage, but free carving wood, win. My reaction to that event made me think having a chunk of wood bounce off your roof isn't usually seen as a good thing, but I'm a spoon carver. We're an abnormal bunch. A slightly dented chimney uh, has given me a couple of crooks, a few feet of carvable wood, and most importantly, that sweet, sweet online content. So I'm able to choose to look at this event through a positive frame because the fallen branch has given me an opportunity to practice my craft. Being able to react to unforeseen circumstances, even reframing them as positive, is an important soft skill gained from spoon carving. Working with greenwood means that so many things are outside of your control. Unexpected bark inclusions, inconveniently placed knots, wood that's just determined to rip itself apart as it dries. We rationally know that we have no control over what we're going to find when we split open a piece of wood. Sure, there are some external clues as to what might be going on on the inside, but we've all been caught out by rot, knots and, and twisted grain. Letting these things get to you would make carving very frustrating. Getting upset over something outside of your control just doesn't make any sense. The unpredictability of wood is just part of what makes spoon carving interesting. In this way, spoon carving helps foster resilience to unforeseen circumstances and helps us keep calm in other situations too. Just a small way that spoon carving is good for you. So while I carved this little spoon from the unexpected bounty of wood that landed on my roof, I'd like to offer up some extra resources if you would like a little more help in developing this way of thinking. Accepting events as they are, without passing judgement on them, is a core part of the school of philosophy known as Stoicism. The Stoics believe that when something outside of your control happens, like a tree branch falling on your chimney, our response has two stages. The first is an emotional reflex. We don't get to choose. The external event just gives us a rush of emotion, happiness, sadness, anger, worry. We just have a burst of that emotion. The second stage is a voluntary judgment of that reaction. The Stoics would say that assigning any values to external events is irrational. Events just are. They're not good, they're not bad, they're neutral. Sure, the Stoics concede that some events are preferable to others, but once we've had that rush of emotion, what really matters is how we respond to those feelings. We can let that initial response rule our thoughts, or we can get on with doing something that's more in line with our goals. If my axe hits a nail hidden in a lump of wood, sure, I'm gonna have a bit of a swear fest. But having gotten used to dealing with other undesirable surprises, I can reframe it as an opportunity to learn how to regrind an axe. The Stoics also taught that we only have control over our thoughts and actions. We have no control over outcomes. When we start judging outcomes as good or bad, what we're doing is making a kind of commitment to obtain or avoid that outcome. But it's irrational to demand that you achieve a goal that you can't control. So I find this idea very freeing. The Stoics encourage us to engage in action with determination, but just to remain unfazed by whatever the outcome is. A Stoic reaching for a goal would often add the clause, if fate allows, to the end of their statements as a reminder that there's always the possibility that everything will go wrong. So today I'm going to carve a spoon, if fate allows.